So first question I have for you, if you're attempting to get your arms around a huge amount of unstructured data, where do you even start? So by huge, uh, do you mean hundreds of documents, thousands, millions? Let's start with thousands and then work up to millions. Okay, so the, the first thing I would say is that you definitely want to have a, a decent understanding of, of just what un, unstructured data analytics is about on a, on a smaller level to really wrap your head around it before you get into the, the truly large amounts of data you're talking about. Um, if you can work with unstructured data at a reasonably large level, um, hundreds, thousands, even tens of thousands of documents, um, you're going to find that your life's a lot easier once mm. you try to do something in the cloud, say on Hadoop, for example. You know, that might be one, one avenue you would take. Right. Um, but in getting there, I would say you might start out with uh, any of the open source projects that seem to be well respected. So in, in the Python world, there's a, a project called NLTK, the Natural Language Toolkit. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a really good book about that, and it and it does a lot to help you sort of ease into the subject. Mm -hmm. it, it teaches you a little bit about um, the process you would go through in, in making sense of the data from an information retrieval standpoint. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of builds into more of a semantic understanding of, well, what if you really wanted to parse a text into sentences and then figure out your subjects and your predicates and your objects, in other words, your part of speech tagging, and then continue building up from there. So I would say start out with something very accessible. Mm -hmm. um, don't make it any harder than you need to. So for Python, that might be NLTK. For Java, it might be a project like Mallet. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of academic work. Start there, start with just even a document or two. Hmm. and um, try to grasp the raw fundamentals of what, what does it really mean to say semantic data. Sure. There, there's a big difference in uh, a lot of the IR techniques where you're looking at just term frequencies and mm -hmm. you're just counting symbols. It's very different from truly understanding what those symbols mean in the context in which they're used. Right. And English is a particularly tricky language. Um, you have certain words that can be used and they mean totally different things depending mm -hmm. on the context. Right. Pronoun resolution. Um, in, in my book I'm working on, there's uh, an example section and it, I have a, a sentence, something to the effect of, um, Professor Plum killed Mr. Green in the study with the candlestick. Mm -hmm. You know, he is dead. Well, what it, who does he refer to in that sentence? Right. As a human, that's very easy sure. for us to understand. To really say with confidence what that means at a semantic level, just having a machine do the work for you, mm -hmm. there's a tremendous amount of work right. uh, really involved to get to that point. So sort of dovetailing with that, what, what is the relationship between semantic analysis and stru unstructured data? Uh, so the way I would answer that is that, um, so, so the interesting thing about unstructured data is that we're never going to have any, any less unstructured data than we did a second ago. It's sure, just gonna, right, it's a very right. relevant thing. Um, as to how semantic analysis relates to it, I, I think that, to, to give you a good example, think about record matching. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very traditional way you'd analyze structured data. You have fields and you're gonna end up having logic to the effect of if this record is similar to this record right. and you're gonna take people's heights and weights and compare them and try to figure out is this really the same guy based on some characteristics. Mm -hmm. Well with unstructured text you don't have that luxury. You have an opaque document that is just symbols and you have to figure out what those symbols mean. You mm -hmm. have to ground those symbols in meaning in a very philosophical way to be able to draw out some type of context for each symbol. Okay. And so in other words you, you can't just look at symbols as syntax anymore you have to go one level deeper and understand how that symbol is used. Mm -hmm. And I and I would say once you've sort of gotten to that inflection point, you're at the level of doing semantic analysis. I you're see. looking at something in context at that point. And, and you're not just looking at it as a symbol, you're looking at the meaning mm -hmm. that underlies the symbol. Now, what types of skills do you need to really be able to extract good information from lots of unstructured data? Do you have to be a programmer? Do you have to be a statistician? 
it, it, it's interesting in that you, it, I think it's a very multidisciplinary field. Mm -hmm. um, it, the company I work for, the, the guy who founded the company has a philosophy background, and that's right. how he got interested in this. I'm sure there are other companies where there are statisticians and computer scientists. Sure. I mean, I think the key thing is you, you really have to be a good thinker. You have to be a good problem solver. Uh, because you can very easily work your way into situations where you're you're sort of at a dead end, you're at like a local minima mm -hmm. or local maxima, mm -hmm. and you just keep trying to create a new rule to dig yourself out of it, but you're never going to be able to do that. So you have to be able to step back, look at the big picture, and ask yourself if, you know, is what I'm doing right here ever going to work? Can I emotionally let go of the energy I put into this for the past sure. two weeks? Right. And, and sort of go back to the drawing board. Right. So I would say you have to have a you know very good clear thinking skills, problem solving skills. You have to be passionate mm -hmm. because it's hard. Um, in my opinion, uh, you know, and this is just me. I think it's arguably the problem of the century. I mean, when we're able to take unstructured data yeah. and really understand what it means, have a machine do this for us, you're you're basically talking about the ability to um, win the Turing award. Right. You know, the Turing problem is you have a guy on each side of a wall interacting. Um, you don't know if on the other side of the wall it's a machine or a human, and it's your job to figure that out. You're, you're communicating through a terminal or mm -hmm. something. Right. You know, so you're really working at that level, and that problem's been around for quite a while. Sure. So last question I have for you. Do you think that, you know, a lot of the tools that we've been talking about, do you think that the tools will get to a point where perhaps people who have a technical bent but not hardcore technical skills will be able to use these tools to extract meaning and to be able to do a lot of the stuff that really requires a lot of skill right now. Yeah, I think we're you know we're certainly working on that already. Um, like I say, uh, Python is a super accessible language. Right. Uh, NLTK is a great project. Um, it's not the most cutting edge project in the world, but as far as being accessible and giving you something you can dabble with mm -hmm. and really start to make forward progress with, um, it, it's a great example of a place to start. Um, it would probably be the, the first place I'd recommend people start. But as far as the bigger picture, I mean, it, it is going to take time. The state of the art in this field is, uh, you know, we're talking PhD dissertations. Right, you know, right. it, it's not accessible material by its very nature. Mm -hmm. It's very niche, very specific. Someone works many years sometimes to make a major breakthrough. Um, companies who, who really want an enterprise level offering may invest. Um, you know, decades sure. or so of combined uh, research and development costs within the course of a year or two mm -hmm. to, to get to something that they think they can sell and that sort of makes a dent in some market. So it's it's by by its very nature, it's not completely accessible. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, you know, if people are passionate about it, if people are working on it, mm -hmm. uh, and it is stuff that matters, by the way, sure, that's going to definitely. Um, create a sort of demand and you know what would be great would be to have a conference similar to OSCON mm -hmm. except that maybe it's about unstructured data analytics. It'd be great to see a conference like that that's not hosted by the ACM and everyone there is a PhD. Sure, have, right. Have right. some just very conversational, passionate people who are capable mm -hmm. get together, take the best technology that's out there, figure out how to make it better. I mean, I think there's going to have to be a little more of a community that emerges. Uh, as far as folks like you and I really making significant progress by opening up Python mm -hmm. and hacking on some data. Sure. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Matt. Great.